What is the meaning of inverse functions? What do they do to each other? They cancel each other out. So keep root is the uh, keep root function right here is the inverse function of the cubic function, and they are uh, like the uh, uh, like the uh, forever enemy of each other. They they basically cancel each other out. So uh, so as, uh, uh, again, uh, we did the uh, inverse functions for the past few days. So this would be uh, something not new. So how do we graph an uh, a cube root function? So just like the cubic function, we start from the zero, zero. This is the center of rotational symmetry. And uh, we go right one up one. And then uh, instead of going up seven, we go to the right seven, okay? As we move uh, up one unit. So this is something uh, you might find very familiar because that's exactly the thing we did back in uh, square root function, right? After we learned the square function, we learned the uh, square root function and we just swapped the X and Y. We move the, uh, the way we move is just uh, swap, okay? Horizontally and vertically, we just swap the uh, movement. Now, there's one more thing I wanna highlight here. If you look at this part of the graph, it looks like the square root function. But cube root is significantly different compared to a square root function because it has the other side. And I really hope that you got, you're able to uh, tell yourself, well, why is that the other side? Well, because uh, one thing that square root it's not happy about is a square root function. They don't want a negative number underneath the square root because that would become an imaginary number. But for cube root, negative number is fine. For example, we see a point right here, which is negative eight comma negative two. Because what is the cube root of negative eight? Okay, it's like asking a question. Do you know? What number multiplies itself for three times would get you negative eight? What number multiplies itself three times would get you negative eight? And that number must be negative two. So uh, before, I'm not sure if you caught the question uh, from uh, earlier last week uh, or earlier this week, uh, people were asked, hey, is it okay to have a negative number underneath the cube root? And the answer is, it is perfectly okay. Nothing is wrong about it. And it would not be an imaginary number because imaginary, imaginary number, the I, it's only val uh, it, it, it is square root of negative one, square root. But we are dealing with keep root at the moment, okay? So for today, we are going to do a very simple uh, task today. We are just going to... Uh, you know, draw some graphs. And uh, if you can take a quick glance at all the examples here, not too difficult. It's mostly just about shifting left and right, up and down. We have some reflection right here. And of course, you know, are you ready to factor the negative when there is a negative sitting in the front? So today we're gonna go ahead and do a few questions. And uh, and then tomorrow we will do something a little more a little bit more complicated, you know, just a little bit. But you can see the uh, the trend. We are just getting more proficient, or shall I say, professional, in making graphs. Now, before I uh, move on to the examples, let me also make one clear disclaimer. Okay, ready. When you move on to pre-calc next year, there's one thing that I would expect you to do. Now, as we uh, review the very first day of school, we have done a few functions last semester. We did linear, absolute value, quadratic, the square one, and the square root. Now, for the past uh, week and this week, we had done. Uh, we have done um, a cubic function 
and keep root function. <clears throat> what we expect you to know is that you are able to at least sketch the shape of the graph for each of the functions that I just mentioned. If you cannot sketch the shape, okay, like you don't want to put yourself in a position where next year your teacher asks you, like, can you graph a cube root function? And you're like, what? What's cube root? That would be a shame, okay? Uh, that would not be a fun experience when you go to pre-cal or in calculus, all right? So I want to make sure that I made this, I made this disclaimer very clear so that you do not look at this as, oh, I'm just gonna take care of this before the quiz. And after the quiz, I'm gonna be like, no, I don't care. I don't want that. And you don't want that either, okay? So now let's go ahead and take a look at example number one. 